Hello everyone, welcome to clavicular fracture part 2 wherein we'll be seeing the rehabilitation or the physiotherapy part of it. It is further divided into operative and non-operative which means the protocol, rehabilitation protocol changes in case of operative treatment and changes in case of non-operative treatment. So we will be first looking at the non-operative protocols and then followed by operative in non-operative protocols, remember polis, okay, where P stands for protection, OL stands for optimal loading, and ICE stands for ice, compress, and elevate. So this is the protocol which you will be following in a non-operative patient or conservative treatment patient. Now, what do I mean by protection? In protection, you'll be using either a sling or a brace. Brace is always put in figure of eight, okay? Now, why is brace and sling given? It is in order to keep your hand, your shoulder immobilized so that you don't lead to further damage, okay? So that's the reason we usually give sling or brace and it is given for up to two to four weeks the sling and the brace is given up to two to four weeks and in non-operative treatment the clavicular fracture takes about 18 to 28 weeks to heal completely okay it takes about 18 to 28 weeks so our physiotherapy protocol changes weekly like you know it changes like first we have our protocol between two to four weeks then six to eight weeks so we have protocols based on weekly operations. So brace, you're going to put in the figure of eight brace. Now, why brace is required even though we have sling? See, people have protruded shoulder, retracted shoulder and all. So what brace does, it, it keeps your shoulder in proper ways so that when the healing takes place, it doesn't occur in a ununiformed form like it should not lead to malunion okay so that's the reason brace is given people usually put both sling and brace now again sling and brace should be put overall the whole day uh, if you're going for bed or some personal hygiene work or when you're doing some exercises you can remove it but you need to be very very cautious and even during sneezing and all you may tend to put a lot of pressure, sneezing and coughing. So there are techniques which will be thought if necessary, okay? So that is about your protection. Now coming to optimal loading. So optimal loading, again, now this is the protocol. Optimal loading is what we follow as a protocol. Weekly, okay? So in first to two weeks, that is one to two weeks. One to two weeks post injury like once the fracture is done one to two weeks what are we supposed to follow arm sling will definitely be there self mobilization of elbow and wrist elbow and wrist you need to do self mobilization in order to prevent stiffness of elbow and wrist okay then rom of shoulder range of motion of shoulder can be done very cautiously under physiotherapy guidance itself and the range of motion which will be done is only pendulum exercises so this is what i mean by pendulum exercises okay you go you, ha you have to take a support of a chair or a table or whatever you have at your availability and then you got to bend down and do kind of exercises round and round, front, back, crisscross. But these are called pendulum exercises. So if at all you're doing any kind of exercises it, for shoulder, it should only and only be pendulum exercises. And with the guidance of the therapist, you can otherwise not do any kind of exercises in first one to two weeks. Okay. Our next protocol is from three to six weeks so what do we do in three to six weeks we will reduce the usage of arm sling okay we would reduce the usage of arm sling and normal activities will we will try to retrieve back the normal activities by removing the arm sling and some amount of assisted rom for shoulders 
we will be doing in three to six weeks. So three to six weeks, we'll be doing assisted range of motion again with the guidance of the therapist. Okay. And decreased sling usage. And remember, assist range of motion again. Above 90 degree, you are not supposed to take your shoulder in any kind of range of motion beat. Abduction, flexion, above 90 degree, it is a big no. So in 90 degree itself, you need to do the movement. And remember one thing, it should be single plane movement. Single plane. You should not do the movement in multiple planes. It should be only single plane movement. No combination movements, nothing. Just single plane movements. Okay. And, and scapular mobilization can be done. Scapular mobilization can be done. Again, seeing your progress according to the therapist guidance. Scapular mobilization can be done. This is the protocol from 1 to 2 weeks and 3 to 6 weeks. Now going to 6 to 12 weeks. So here the protocol completely changes in 6 to 12 weeks. As much more healing will be seen in this weeks. So 6 to 12 weeks protocol we are writing down. Number 1, free range of motion. Free range of motion in all planes. There we saw only in single plane. Here, free range of motion in all planes can be done. Isotonic exercises of the shoulders can be given. Okay. Then, progressive resisted exercises can be given. Progressive resisted exercises. And uh, these are the main three things which you will be following. You will not go for any strengthening protocol yet. Because we need to see what is the basis. Once we take out the x-ray, we can see how much the fracture is healed. According to that, we will be moving on to a further protocol. So all the first th three protocols, like 1 to 2 weeks, 3 to 6 weeks, 6 to 12 weeks, all should be followed in 6 to 12 weeks. Then 12 plus weeks. After 12 weeks, what? 12 plus weeks, according to the progress seen, According to the x-ray which we have seen, we will go to a strengthening protocol. We will build up endurance. So after 12 weeks, we'll be seeing more of endurance, strengthening, okay, treadmill exercises. You can give cycling. So basically to build up all the endurance, if he's a sports person, if she's a sports person, these are all helpful. And remember, from week 1 Till 12 plus weeks, you can give deep breathing exercises in order to maintain chest hygiene. Okay, deep breathing exercises can be given. So this is the protocol for non-operative rehab. Now coming to operative. Now, after operative treatment, after your uh, intramedullary or screw and plate fixation, what do you do? You have few exercises which can be followed. Since it's already healed now, our protocol becomes a little more easier. Definitely, we will be giving deep breathing exercises to maintain chest hygiene. Okay. Then we can directly move on to exercises. We have ball exercises. So basically, what we need to maintain here, make sure is our first goal is to get the range of motion. Okay. And then strengthening. That's it. Here we don't need to immobilize or something like that. First range of motion and then followed by strengthening. For range of motion, you'll be using your ball exercises. I'll be showing you the pictures. Okay, the ball exercise, the pendulum exercises and the knee brace exercises. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what this is. Knee brace exercise. Not knee brace. Uh, I mean to say uh, knee move mo mobilizer exercises. Okay. Now, what do I mean by this? I will let you know. And TheraBand exercises, strengthening protocol. Like I prefer TheraBand exercises more than anything else. So TheraBand exercises can be given in order for strengthening and everything. So what do I mean by ball exercises, pendulum exercises? We'll all be seeing in the photos. So our mainly operative protocol is range of motion followed by strengthening and returning back to sports or returning back to daily activities of normal life everything so this is the first exercise that is the pendulum exercises so our first uh, initial goal is to get back the range of motion so we will be seeing few range of the motion exercises and 
pendulum exercises is one of them it is gravity assisted exercises so the pressure on the shoulder or the clavicle will not be more and you can do the range of motion easily okay you can do all the range of motion in all planes so this is the first range of motion exercises which is usually given followed by the ball exercise now this is what i mean by ball exercise so this is going to be your initial position and this is going to be your end position so your goal is to take your hand from this position you need to extend your elbow straight like thoroughly you need to extend your elbow this is again range of motion exercises which is given ball will assist you to complete the range of motion exercises exactly the same way we do it on the wall with the ball so here we are going to take the ball up and down with the elbow extended itself we are going to take the ball up we're going to bring it back down with elbow extended so here there's no case of folding like the previous one so this is the second range of motion exercises which we will be giving followed by this is what i said knee mobilizing exercises so this is usually used for mobilization of knee joint or the range of motion of knee joint to maintain that but we will be using it for our elbow our shoulders as well so this in here the girl is doing the flexion motion okay with the help or with the assistant of the equipment now she exactly doing abduction so previously she was doing flexion and now she's doing for abduction so this helps mainly this equipment helps mainly in flexion and abduction so once we restore our range of motion by doing all these exercises we go to our strengthening protocol so strengthening protocol will be done with some of the help of thera bands so these are all thera band exercises which is done this is the thera band extension exercises this thera band internal rotation exercises external rotation abduction this is your uh, internal rotation this is your external rotation okay so um this is your flexion extension all kinds of exercises strengthening exercises can be done used by a thera band using a thera band and it can also the pressure or the resistance can also be given by the therapist like actively or you can give the resistance through your normal hand so you have various ways to strengthen you can either give a ball activity like a basketball activity that is very good for you know strengthening and range of motion so the basketball activity can be given and you can modify okay you can modify your own set of exercises and protocols depending upon the needs of a person like if he or she is from a sports background and need to return back to sports your strengthening exercises should be done maximally because she is you know using her hand continuously like a tennis player or badminton player that is what they do okay and if a person if a homemaker or just a normal corporate job officer comes to you so there are protocol changes our aim is to maintain range of motion and a little bit of strengthening and not more because you know their type of job does not require too much of strengthening so accordingly we will design our protocols set up protocols so yeah so hope this was all informative for you and here we complete our clavicular fracture rehabilitation thank you